You're listening to The Power Project. I'm your host, Brandy Voth, and it's my goal each week to inspire and empower you to go out and live purpose-filled lives while owning your God-given power. However, it may look a little difficult this year to go out. I know that I myself am facing different challenges as we navigate this season that we are in in 2020 with COVID guidelines, restrictions. One such obstacle that we've had to overcome is how to successfully launch a book without being able to do in-person events. Most of the time when you traditionally launch a book, you have book signings and pop-up events and speaking engagements where people come together and gather in person and you talk about the book and discuss the book. Sometimes it looks like in-person book clubs. However, we are not letting the circumstances of this situation hold us back from launching this book or talking about the Power Project book. Instead, we've been doing a virtual book launch. I've been chatting with people on podcasts and vlogs and in Zoom meetings and any type of virtual platform that you could imagine. It's been really great and our reach has actually been even greater than what it would have been if I would have been leaving my house and running from book signing to book signing. So today I chat with uh, Michael Butler over with Beyond Publishing. He invited me on to the author spotlight and I wanted to give you guys an inside look at that interview where we chat all things book, who I wrote it for, why I wrote it for, and how long it took to write. So pull up a chair, put your headphones on, and have a listen to mine and Michael's conversation. Without further ado, let's jump right in, shall we? Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Author Spotlight. I am your host, Michael D. Butler in Frisco, Texas, and I'm so excited today. You know, we love to interview amazing authors all over the globe that have amazing stories. And, you know, we feature some amazing women. And today's author is from Dallas, Texas. She's doing some pretty incredible things. She recently went number one with her book, her Beyond Publishing book, uh, number one international best-selling author of The Power Project. Now, she's had a top podcast for a long time, and she's founder of The Power Hat Company that is a social enterprise employing trafficking survivors. So hopefully we get to hear a little bit about that. She's a mother, and she's a proud wife, and she's got some amazing things here to share, and she's helping women all over the globe find their purpose and chart a new course for their life. So let's welcome to the Author Spotlight, let's welcome Brandy Voth from Texas. How are you doing, Brandy? Hey there. I'm great, Michael. How about yourself? Hey, so glad to have you here on this Thursday. Doing super. It's just always fun to check in with authors. And I, I know you've you've had a plan to write a book for a while, but I, I've been wanting to get you on the show for a long time to find out why did you write the book and, and why did you write it at this time? Oh, wow. So I... I've always enjoyed writing. Like I've I've written all my life. That was one of my favorite things as a kid. And it was one of those subjects in school that I never struggled with. But in all honesty, the idea of writing a book was not necessarily at the forefront. I I am a speaker and I enjoy interacting with people in a live audience, but I never thought about putting my words into a book until I started uh, really just writing some posts on social media and had different people reaching out at different times saying, hey, I would like to, uh, I, I'd like to see a book by you. And uh, so, you know, it, it kind of like planted a seed with me, like, okay, so my words have impact. I, I had a good friend pass away and I wrote a blog post about uh, mental health and anxiety and depression and uh, inevitably suicide and it went viral and I had a lot of people reaching out saying that my words had touched them and I thought well if we can impact someone with a social media post in a positive manner then maybe we can impact them with a book I started putting things together into a book and at the same time I had people asking me why uh, why I had become involved with the fight against human trafficking and how I had become a mentor to traffic survivors and really how I had stepped into this, this journey of purpose that I've been walking for the past few years. So 
it's been a culmination of, of the past, you know, it took me about two and a half years of writing just off and on before I had it put together. I mean, there's no better time than right now. People are sitting at home and uh, there's a whole lot of ugliness and negativity and hatred in the world right now. And so if we can put something out there that is positive and creating a purposeful impact in the world, then I can't think of a better time. I know we've been getting some great feedback on barnesandnoble.com, on amazon.com and other sites. Um, Who did you write the book for, Brandy? You know, in all honesty, I wrote it for the person sitting at home that thinks it's too late in life or thinks that they're not smart enough, they're not young enough, they're not old enough, they're not talented enough, they're not gifted enough, they're, they don't count enough. It's for that person that's sitting at home that feels a call on their heart and feels a call on their lives to create an impact, to, to follow that call, but they don't know that they already have whatever it is that they need to follow the call that's on their life. Yeah, I got you. Well, that 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 really makes a lot of sense. Now, you've you've had a podcast for a long time, and and I I want to ask you about that. But before before I ask you about the podcast, I really want to get into the social enterprise that that you're so excited about. That do you talk about the social your social enterprise in your book? I do, I do. I tell uh, I tell the story about what really uh, inspired me to create it. So I'm going to leave that one for you guys to read in the book as far as. My muse is what I'll call it. Um, but in the in the uh, mentoring traffic survivors in the world that I'm in, I teach a business class weekly. I do a it's a life coaching and a purposeful business class to help these survivors realize their gifts and their talents and their skills and prepare them for job interviews and the application process and how to present themselves to the world. And in that, the recurring problem that we see time and time again is the fact that they are taking all the steps and all the strides to turn their lives around, but they're faced with obstacles when they try to gain employment because the majority of traffic survivors have a criminal record. And that is something that we are working diligently. I know that in Texas, Governor Abbott's office is working for the victim advocacy, but the majority of them have a criminal record and an incarcerated person has a 27% higher unemployment rate. And mm. it's been said that, you know, an incarcerated a person with a criminal record has as hard of a time finding a job as someone did during the Great Depression. So oh, now wow. we couple that with the current economic crisis that we're all facing. And it's, it's harder than ever for these people to find gainful employment. So I, I've known for quite some time that I needed to create something. My husband and I are serial entrepreneurs. We love starting businesses and running businesses. And uh, so I knew that I needed to create something where we could give an opportunity to the women that I work with. And it needed to look like some type of job that they could do, whether they're here for one month or one year and uh, something that they can do entry level. So I love hats. I've always loved hats. I've always wanted to ask you about this hat. I think there's probably a story behind this hat, right? So this (laughs) Is This is one of my hats. This is uh, the Power Hat Company is the company. So we uh, manufacture the hats. The bandanas are uh, handwoven eye cap bandanas from Artisans in Guatemala. And then the leather bands have stamped words on them that the, the residents that are in an aftercare program are able to stamp. We've had some community members that have come around and offered mentorship to teach leather stamping and leather tooling. And so... You pick your word. We have a list of words on the website and basically it would be what your called word is. So mine is ambassador. I'm an ambassador of truth. I use my voice to uh, tell the world whatever it is that God tells me to tell them. But yours may be warrior or overcomer or enough or survivor. So there's a whole list that you can choose from. And it's um, not only is it providing employment to traffic survivors, but we have an affiliate program with all of the organizations that we work with that through their own personal links, they're able to promote the company and then they get 15% of all sales off the top, which comes out to about 50% of proceeds on any hats that they sell. You know, that that is so exciting. I love doing, I, I love hearing about what you and your husband are doing. And I know you've gotten a lot of positive feedback from Governor Abbott and congressmen and women in 
legislators in, in Texas. So w- what are some of the things, I mean, give us some feedback. I, I know we want to dive into the book, but I'm sure you have some testimonials too of just why you started that organization, why you're so passionate about it. You know, I, I see you're making a huge impact here. Give us some more insight into that. Sure. So I, you know, a lot, I, oftentimes I get asked why human trafficking, why sexual exploitation and trafficking, you know, do you have personal ties to that? And in all honesty, it was a, a billboard in Australia that mentioned, and you can read all about this in the book. I'm going to walk you through the journey of me really discovering my call. But the uh, the idea was that there was a billboard that talked about immigrants being trafficked. And in in my mind, I thought this was an Australian problem. But obviously, when I got home, um, it really kept coming up to the forefront over and over again, this trafficking term. And mm-hmm. so I leaned into it. And I happened to be at a place in my life where I was open. I was open hands, open heart. I had been really successful in business. Um, I love training women and coaching women. And so in that, I was in a place where I knew that I was great at that, but I also felt even a bigger calling in life. And Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, and then it it was able to come full circle. You talk about Governor Abbott. It was able to come full circle this last year because I'm an A-team leader with A21, which is Christine King's uh, anti-trafficking organization doing huge things in the world. Great organization, what she's doing. Yeah. So as a leader with that organization, I was given the opportunity to go with our partnership with Governor Abbott's office and do a press release campaign for our Can You See Me billboard campaign. And so I was able to educate people on the fact that these billboards that are put out for community awareness are are actually what got me involved in the cause three years ago on the other side of the world. So it was pretty beautiful. Yeah. I mean, God has a way of bringing you full circle and using your entrepreneurial talents. I know in a past life, you were a top uh, salesperson at at an automotive dealership and you were basically selling, selling the men under the bus and doing, writing more business there. And, you know, um, what, what, what was the switch from really, you know, I know you're a mom and a wife and all that good stuff. Um, what was it for you? Did you just want to focus more time on this social enterprise that you're doing? Is that what the calling you had? So I, I was a, a Ford saleswoman back in uh, back before I married my husband, and I I was born to sell. Like I love selling, and anyone who comes in and tells me that they have a problem with sales, I'm like, you're selling something every day, and you're consuming something every day. Somebody's got to do the job, right? And so uh, so I love sales, and uh, I took ten years off to be a stay at home mom. Good I have thing. a wonderful husband uh, that took great care of me in that time frame. And I got to just love all my babies. And uh, I mean, I lived a pretty fantastic life, uh, but it also was not necessarily the life I had planned for. And there was something in my heart, in my spirit, in my nature that says like, I love my husband. I love my kids. I love all this, but I also really love business. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when our youngest went to kindergarten, it ended up that, uh, I had to help my husband with a business of ours that we were working to turn around, that we had just made some poor decisions with appointment and within the company. And so we had to jump in and kind of, you know, pull our boots up and go to work and dig it out. And uh, through that process, I came out of that into uh, a skincare business. And it wasn't a business that I planned on working. It was a business that I thought I would just use products and get a discount But then it sparked something in me. And I was like, oh, I have something of my own, you know, after 10 years. Like, I I love that my husband does great at making money. I like making my own money. Mm -hmm. And so uh, then I built out a sales team across the U.S. and Australia of uh, just some phenomenal women and was able to train them and coach them and lead them. And I was like, this is what I was put on the face of this planet for. So beautiful. I still do that. That is still my bread and butter. That is still what brings all the dollars in every single month that supports uh, a social enterprise hack company and supports a book launch. And uh, yeah, so we didn't start the hack company because we needed another business because it's like number <laughs> six of the businesses that we are, our partners in are running at this point. Uh-huh. But uh, I just didn't have a business that was a good fit for 
employing the, the women that I work with. I needed something that I could tailor to them. And I mean, I kind of wanted the inside deal on some really cute hats. Well, yeah, you definitely have some beautiful hats. I think you're coming to speak at our event, the Beyond Publishing event at the Kentucky Derby next year, which got got delayed this year because of COVID to uh, from May to September. So block it, in, block it out the first Saturday in, uh, in May of next year with Dee Dee Cox. She'll be our our uh, host there in Louisville. So we want you and your husband to be a part of that. We want, of course, you to feature the hats. Um, oh, yeah. we'll, have our new, we'll have our new line, our new spring yeah. and summer line by then that I can bring and, and debut at the Derby. Well, well, tell us a little bit about that because, you know, you're giving women, I mean, it's almost like you've come full circle here. You found a business model that helps you not only survive, but thrive. You work with women all over the planet now because of this business model. Isn't the internet great where you can you can do that? It wasn't like our grandparents or our parents' generation. You know, it's just a beautiful way. But the fact you've you've launched this social enterprise. But I, I want to dive into some more stories around the book because you live on a beautiful lake. Did you get some inspiration to write? Uh, I know some of our authors want to come out to your to your cabin and rent your cabin to to write a book. Uh, tell us a little bit about being out there. Did you get some inspiration to write? Yeah, it's it's really really interesting because uh, the before we ever lived on the property that we live on, we lived uh, just around the corner. Uh, I'm at the same lake in a different home that my husband had built, and we had friends that had the property that we're on now. And so at the time. They had a friend that was an author that would come stay in their guest cabin and write. And and we always knew about that. And then when we moved to the property, we would have people that would uh, call to book because it's it's a little guest cabin, like a VRBO. And they would call to book it and say, you know, I'm writing a book. I want to book it one weekend a month for a year while I'm writing this book. And they would come and write. And The great thing about the cabin is there's no Wi-Fi, there's no cell service, so you don't get distracted by your notifications or anything while you're riding. It's very peaceful. It's by a creek. There's deer that roam. We have turkey that roam. I I had a peacock in my backyard the other day. And and so I did uh, really all of my riding. The majority of my riding, I believe, like 95% of it was at, at my house at the lake, we have some, I have a great perch that overlooks uh, the lake so I could sit and ride and my kids would go to school and I would drink some coffee and just get to riding. And for some reason, Fridays tend to be my riding day. I think it's, uh, I think it, it may have to do with the fact that the beginning of the week has all of our chores and all of our errands, you know, you need groceries, the house is dirty, the bills need to be paid, everything's on Monday. But by Friday, I've kind of released that burden, and it it tended to be that Fridays were the days that I could just really create. Hey guys, if you've considered starting a podcast, but you're overwhelmed by how to actually launch, I've created a basics of podcasting course over on Skillshare. So you can sign up for my course and get two months of free premium membership. Skillshare is where I learn all types of skills that I don't know how to do otherwise. I'll include the link in the show notes. You can head over to Skillshare and search Brandy Both's class, The Basics of Podcasting. You know, it's really powerful what you said there. I could write a book in a week if I didn't have Wi-Fi. I get so distracted with all the dings and the notifications, right? So I think you're really onto something there. In fact, I want to have you as a guest soon. On a, on a class that we do. We have a class that we do. In fact, it, it's a free class that we're offering during the pandemic. We've got a new one starting up August 7th. So it, it's about halfway full. The first 10 people are free. So just go to writebook60days.com. And uh, Brandy, I want you to come on there as a guest and kind of share. What would you say um, for somebody that's uh, stuck in writing their book? How did you, what advice would you give you know, of course, come to your lake and sit there without the Wi-Fi. But what what advice would you say if, if there's an author stuck with their manuscript? So I think that we don't get stuck because we're lacking content. It's it's OK. I'm a mindset coach, you guys like mm-hmm. that. This is my jam. And the reason we get stuck is because we hold ourselves back. And we believe the lies that the enemy feeds us and we buy into limiting beliefs. And 
any time that I went through a non-writing phase, and I had a lot of them because I hit and miss wrote this book for two and a half years. And any time that I was that I wasn't writing and I wasn't creating, it's because I had decided that that book wasn't important, that my words weren't important, that someone's opinion of the book was going to be negative, that I wasn't walking in, in God's call with the book. And Anytime that I that I unpacked that, I could write freely. And so if you find yourself stuck, and I, I talk about it in this book, when I intentionally sat down and overcame the belief that someone else had already written the book or someone else had already said something similar to what I had to say, which was absolutely bogus, like we all have our own stories and what the, you know, the gospels in the Bible, like they're all the same story told by a different author. And oh, I love that. That's such a powerful revelation. In fact, uh, Shayla here is, uh, has given a few sermons herself in her life. And she says that's powerful as well from Connecticut. Uh, very impactful, the power of your voice, believing the lie that your words aren't important. So you overcame that and obviously got the book out. And it's an amazing book. In fact, I was just looking through some of the uh, testimonials here from people like Tina Strong, Kirsten Goff, Jessica Brinkley are saying things like, I'm only on chapter three, but I wanted to say, wow, this book is almost my life. It is speaking volumes. Many people need this book. I can't wait to read more. Very encouraging. So you found a way, uh, Brandy, to press through. So give us a little more on that. I'm liking what I'm hearing. Absolutely. So it ended up, I was at a, and this is in the book, you can read all about it, but I was at a point where I was, uh, I had to decide that the story that I had to tell, the words that I was given were God appointed. And I had to really decide that God's opinion of me and God's plan for my life was more important than anyone else's, like more important than critics, more important than family members, more important than reviews. And for me to not fulfill this call that I felt so deeply on my heart yeah. was being completely disobedient. And I had to unpack that. So when I made this decision, it was, um, let's see, July, let's see, end of July, 1st of August of 2019. And I, I gave myself, I, the book was most of the way done at this point. I mean, we were probably 60% done with it at that point. Um, and so I looked at my word count and I sat down and I gave myself a 90 day deadline from Good the day you. that I was writing to this is going to be finished. Like I'm not, I'm no longer saying I'm writing a book. I'm going to say I've written a book. So, Let me ask you this question. Did what? you put it on your social media that you're giving yourself 90 days? You know, I don't, what I did is I have a journal that I, okay. I set my goals, my intentions, my gratitudes daily. Right. And so I wrote there on my deadline of my one thing I was going to do. I, I put okay. my deadline as my one thing. I think I did probably like yeah. snap. You, made that. It you at least told your family and those around you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think I did share that to my story. And then I just worked backwards and I looked at if I have 90 days and I have 25,000 words I need to write or 30,000 words I need to write. Cause I had it in my head that I was shooting for 75,000. Um, just because I don't know some of my favorite authors, that's about what their books were. Mm -hmm. And so I just worked backwards and I decided how many words do I need to write per week in this 90 day period? And if I skipped a week, then I needed to double it the next week. And how fast can I write? How many days do I need to write? And didn't know how I was going to wrap the book up. But you'll see when you read it that uh, God really beautifully orchestrated that for me when I was sitting at the end of the book trying to decide how I put a bow on it. Hey, you, you, you brought up a very powerful point, and you know, that was the accountability factor of giving yourself the 90-day deadline. Give yourself a deadline. I remember when I ran my first marathon a few years ago, my running group was my accountability group, and they drug my, uh, my butt out of bed at 5 a.m. Saturday morning when it's 20 degrees and across that finish line on those long runs preparing for that 26 miles. So being in a writing group and setting a deadline for yourself, but you said something very powerful I want to ask you about, uh, Brandy, and that is family. Do you advise people to get feedback from their family or not? Is that beneficial or not? It depends. 
<laughs> this is like, I, I, I was really, so for starters, I think that if your book, if your story involves your family, which for me, it involves my husband, it involves my mom, my dad, um, a lot of family members. If it involves others, I think we have to be really intentional about making certain that we're sharing our own personal story, our own personal experience, and we're not sharing anything else that belongs to someone else. And because, like I said, we all see the world differently. Right. So we're telling it through the lens that we've seen it. Now, I didn't get feedback from family. I uh, only got feedback from my husband. I did. He does. He's not a reader. He has. He's a. a machine brain, you know, kind of guy. He, he doesn't enjoy reading. And so he laughed and said, I guess since I'm in your book, then I need to read this before. <laughs> it gets published. So I think you wanted to make sure I didn't throw him under the bus anywhere. So well, well, that's, a very, that's a very balanced way to say it, because I got to be honest, I've seen some new writers really get crushed because their family weren't they weren't safe. Right. Mm-hmm. We understand uh, you know, uh, through modern psychology and boundaries that you've got safe people, you've got toxic people. And if your family's toxic or are not a strong support, obviously your husband's in your corner, he's on your team and he's going to be objective, but also supportive. But I've seen many a new author get crushed just because their family wasn't healthy and they thought their family would applaud them and, and they didn't get the affirmation they need. Instead, they got crushed and didn't publish their book. So be very wise and discerning about that. But I do want you to share in our group uh, soon. Now, I've shared your link tree. Is that a good URL for us to share for people to get a hold of you on everything with your podcast and everything? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I believe I need to do some updating on that over there because I've been in the midst of, you know, like launching a book and a hat company. So I probably need to follow up. I am like a mighty team of one over here with uh, Good for you. One, one college age assistant that helps me as much as she can, but she's got as many projects going on as I do. So, awesome. you know, uh, the Linktree thing, you can find just about anything you need over there, I believe. The yeah. Power of Market podcast is on any platform that you listen to podcasts on and you're going to hear, you're going to get some business coaching from me, some mindset coaching from me, and then a lot of interviews with really incredible women. Beautiful, be- beautiful. Author Brandy Voth, we're getting a lot of great feedback uh, with the launch of your book, uh, The Power Project. Now, um, I know you speak a lot. I know you coach. Uh, you talked a little bit about the podcast. Um, what, what's one of your favorite uh, topics in the book or what's been one of your uh, chapters with the greatest feedback? Give us a little insight on what people are going to find when they go buy your book. That's a great question. So I think that I think that what people are responding to really well is the thing that was the most terrifying part of the entire book. And that was the uh, the vulnerability and the authenticity that I that I brought to the story. I really when writing I wrote it for people that could learn from something that I've walked through. And you don't think about, oh, there's actually people that know me going to read this. Like, I'm going to see Sally at the grocery store and she's going to know all the laundry. Right. Uh, So I think the authenticity and the vulnerability and, and the fact that people that are reading the book are seeing the word purpose gets built up huge. Right. Like. People think like, oh, we're searching for our purpose and we're trying to find the perfect job with purpose. And what people don't realize is that every day you in your everyday life can stand the purpose you're called to be in. So I believe that the the best thing that people are receiving from this book is the fact that you don't have to be anything special to stand in the purpose and, and serve a call in life. Brandy, what's the best way? I want to thank you so much. This has just been phenomenal. We're going to have to circle back and do it more. And and tell me what's the best way for people to get a hold of you if they want to book the writing retreat on the lake or if they want to uh, uh, find out more about you or follow you or, or get a hold of some of your coaching tools. Absolutely. So uh, Brandy at the dash powerproject.com. There is a dash. I'm waiting for someone to give up the non dashed powerproject.com, putting that into the universe. Send me an email. Uh, I can throw you, if you like, you can subscribe to the newsletter. I send a weekly newsletter out with podcast episodes and some inspirational uh, blog posts and, and resources that may make your life easier. Also, I'm not truly a millennial, but I am on Instagram. And that Ooh. is, I, I love DMs on Instagram. I, I answer every single DM I get. I try to respond to every comment I get. So Hang out with me over there. And then you can follow the Power Project page on Facebook. 
where you can see some of the vlog. And uh, if you want to be part of my book launch team, then you can actually be in our private Facebook group, which is Power Squad. And it's a group over by the Power Project on Facebook. We can hang out. I'm on all the platforms. I mean, look, I'm even on TikTok if you're a 12 year old girl and you want to hang out over there. Well, you are. You're everywhere. And, and I think that's what's so powerful. You've been able to um, touch so many women and employ women that are coming out of human trafficking. I just think it's phenomenal. And uh, what's, what's next for Brandy? And be sure I got the email spelled correctly there. I think I had to correct it, but I think it's right now. And uh, you, you're phenomenal. You're just doing amazing things. I know you're very prolific. What is next now in coming up 2021? And uh, you've got a group of powerful women that can help you launch the book. And kudos, you went number one on Amazon. So for a limited time, you can grab the uh, the ebook at the at the promo price. That price is going up. So grab it now. Um, and uh, what's next, Brandy? Oh, 2021, I envision a world that has no COVID or at least has a cure and we are able to travel freely. I envision uh, some retreats, some in-person retreats where I'm able to interact with my community one-on-one -on -one in a coaching setting. And uh, we're going to we're going to sell as many hats as we possibly can to employ as many traffic survivors as we can. We're going to continue speaking out and raising awareness about uh, the travesty of human trafficking, whether that is in virtual events or in person. Please, dear Jesus, let it be in person. And uh, and and 2021 should hopefully see maybe a second book, you know, being being brought to the table. I, it's kind of like having a kid. You have one and you're like, oh, I don't think I'm ever going to have another one. That was such a process. Right. Like we can and get out of diapers and then it's like, yeah, this is great. Do yeah, let's go ahead and do it again. So, you know, we've the book is out into the world. It's been birthed. And now I'm like, OK, maybe I go back to writing again. Well, well congratulations. We're definitely going to circle back. Brandy, thank you so much. We ran, uh, ran the clock out and look forward to hearing more from you and uh, seeing you on the stages of the world. So thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us on the Author Spotlight. Thank you, Brandy. Awesome. Thank you so much, so much for having me. I appreciate it. You bet. If you enjoyed this conversation, do me a favor, head over to iTunes, write a review, give us a rating. We'll take five stars if you're feeling generous and tell all your friends about us. By the way, have you picked up the Power Project book yet? Because it's out in the world and you're going to hear all about my personal creation of the Power Hat Company. Speaking of the Power Hat Company, have you gotten a hat pre-ordered yet? So you can get the book at thepowerprojectbook.com and you can check out the hats over at thepowerhatco.com. I can't wait to chat with you next week, but until then, go out and live your best purpose-filled lives.